Since the dawn of time, man has been looking up to the heavens. He has always wanted to fly or be in space. But space is hostile and deadly to man because it lacks the atmospheric pressure, oxygen, and temperature to sustain life. A way was needed to conquer space and survive while working and exploring in this harsh environment. In short, protection was needed from the environment of space, a spacesuit. For many people, the spacesuit symbolizes space exploration. The need to work in the vacuum of space is an important element of the NASA space program. Here you are watching two astronauts wearing specially made suits, experimenting in zero gravity with the techniques that will be needed for construction of space station freedom. Those special suits they're wearing, called extravehicular mobility units, protect the astronaut from the environment of space and provide the astronaut with the flexibility he needs to work efficiently outside the shuttle and on the space station. Survival and mobility are important factors in designing the spacesuit. Before looking in detail at how these suits work to protect the astronaut, let's take a look at a few of the early attempts to find a way to ensure manned survival in a harsh environment. This is aviator Wiley Post and his Winnie May an early 1930s version of a pressure suit. He was among the first to discover the problems of movement in a pressurized suit when he and his molded plywood monoplane were skimming the upper reaches of the stratosphere in cross-country speed flights. He discovered that his suit became rigid and immobile as soon as it was pressurized, just like a balloon. The suit worn by Mercury astronauts was adapted from the U.S. Navy pressure suit. This suit was worn as a backup to the spacecraft cabin pressure control system and would have been used only if cabin pressure had been lost. Designers used a different approach for the spacesuit worn by Gemini astronauts. The effort here was to make the whole suit flexible when pressurized. The construction improved arm and shoulder mobility and made the suit more comfortable when it was worn unpressurized for long periods of time. For the Apollo program, Astronauts needed a suit that would allow them to climb out of the lunar module, descend a ladder to the surface, bend over to pick up samples, and walk over rugged terrain. The Apollo spacesuit was designed to satisfy the unique combination of lunar requirements, including increased mobility, low weight because of the moon's partial gravity, and ruggedness for the dusty environment. The complete suit system, including Hamilton Standard's portable life support system, is called the Extravehicular Mobility Unit, or EMU for short. For the Space Shuttle astronauts, a new suit was again developed to incorporate improvements in comfort, convenience, and mobility over all previous designs. This suit, which is the one used today, is modular, features many interchangeable parts, and can be sized for both large and small crew members. It can be operated in temperature extremes of between 350 degrees Fahrenheit and minus 250 degrees Fahrenheit. The Hamilton Standard EMU is often referred to as the world's smallest manned spacecraft, providing protection and Earth-like mobility for the astronaut working in space. Hi, I'm Karen Wallace for Hamilton Standard. Let's take a look at the components that make up the shuttle spacesuit, known as the EMU. Then we'll see the suit put on and taken off, called donning and doffing. First, let's look at the liquid cooling and ventilation garment. It looks like a pair of long underwear, with one important exception. It's laced with 300 feet of small plastic tubing, which circulates cooling water over the entire body. Next, here's the lower torso assembly, the pants and boots, and the hip, knee, and ankle joints. This covers the crew member from the waist down. It's made of nine laminated layers. These serve several functions. The bladder and restraint provide pressure retention. The liner protects these two layers from micrometeoroid puncture. The next five layers insulate the astronaut by blocking the heat of the sun. The final outermost layer is Teflon coated. It provides insulation, is abrasion resistant, and protects the astronaut in the event of a fire. This is the hard upper torso. It's a fiberglass shell that serves as the main building block of the EMU. 
the primary life support system, and other spacesuit components attached to this hard structure. This is the arm assembly with the outer covering removed so you can see what it looks like. The arm assembly has a ball bearing at the elbow and shoulder joints for easy mobility. It attaches right here. The glove of the suit is like the human hand. It incorporates all the basic motion of the hand and wrist. The wrist of the glove has a ball bearing and the fingers are flexible. And inside is the molded bladder. The display and control module is mounted to the hard upper torso and contains all the displays and controls that the crew member needs to operate the primary life support system. This is the primary life support system and the heart and soul of the EMU. It's mounted to the back of the hard upper torso and provides the thermal and environmental control for the suit. This is a standalone battery powered system that provides a number of important functions. Breathable air. Pure oxygen is constantly added to the suit to replenish the oxygen consumed by the astronaut's breathing. Temperature control. By varying the flow of cold water through the suit, the astronaut can control his or her body temperature during both idle periods and periods of maximum exertion. Simulated Earth-like pressure. In the vacuum of space, an astronaut needs pressure surrounding their body to simulate the atmospheric pressure here on Earth. Contamination control. As the astronaut breathes, carbon dioxide is exhaled and if allowed to accumulate, would become toxic to the astronaut. The contamination control cartridge within the primary life support system prevents this. Humidity control. Water vapor is also exhaled when you breathe. Airflow within the suit is used to collect this humidity and the astronaut's perspiration. By doing this, problems such as helmet fogging and moisture collection within the suit are eliminated. This is the helmet. It protects the wearer from thermal and solar radiation environments in space. Before you can put one on, you first have to put on the communications assembly. This has two microphones one primary and one backup, and a headset. This allows the astronaut to talk to crew members in and outside of the orbiter. The helmet has three shields and one gold-plated visor to protect the astronaut's eyes from the sun. There are other pieces of equipment that go along with the suit. The urine collection device, the in-suit drink bag, and the umbilical line for life support and pre and post mission servicing. Now that you've seen all the sub assemblies of the suit, let's put one on. With us today is Jeff Robert, a Hamilton Standard suit engineer. Jeff will be taking us through a donning exercise. Okay, Jeff, where do we start? Well, the first thing we have to do is put on the lower torso assembly. And in order to do that, you've got to get your feet down into these boots. And then pull the trousers up simply by pulling on these dining handles. Okay, what's next? Well, the next thing is to uh, don the hard upper torso. And what are those thumb loops for? Well, they hold these sleeves uh, in place, so when I go through the uh, arms, they don't uh, slide up on my uh, arms. Right, the next thing we're going to do is connect the liquid cool garment to the hard upper torso by, uh, by this connector here. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is connect the lower torso assembly to the hard upper torso by means of this quick disconnect at the waist. Then I'm going to put on the comm cap. Here you go, Jeff. Thank you.
And your glove. Mm All right, the last thing we're going to do is put the uh, helmet on. Now that Jeff is completely enclosed in the suit, he is being supplied with his own air while the suit is pressurized at approximately four pounds per square inch, just like it is in space. Keep in mind the problems Wiley Post had with his Winnie May suit, which became rigid like a balloon when it was pressurized. How you doing in there, Jeff? I'm doing fine. Now, if you'll help me off this dining station, I'll demonstrate some of the mobility and flexibility that's been designed into this shuttle space suit. Okay. First, let me demonstrate some of the bearings we've been talking about. There's a bearing in the wrist, a bearing in the elbow, and a bearing in the shoulder. The wrist bearing allows me to rotate my wrist in this fashion. The elbow bearing allows me to raise it up and down like so. And the shoulder bearing allows me to swing my arms back and forth. Additionally, there's flexibility built into the, into the wrist so that I can move my wrist in this fashion or in this fashion. There's also a joint at the elbow so I can move my arm in and out. And there's one at the shoulder that allows me to swing my arms up and down. Moving down to the waist, there's a bearing in the lower section that allows me to twist the torso from side to side. There's also a joint in the waist section that allows me to bend over. And there's also joints in the knees so that I can bend my knees. And then, of course, to be able to walk, there's also a joint in the ankles so I can move my ankles up and down. And now I'd like to demonstrate the ability of the suit to do jumping jacks. You can see they're quite easy. Thanks a lot, Jeff. I'm sure you want to get back to your donning station now. Thank you. Remember when we talked about the dexterity provided by the gloves? Here's a little demonstration of just how good they really are. You remember what this means, right? EMU. The Hamilton Standard EMU makes space exploration possible. It is indeed the world's smallest spacecraft providing protection and Earth-like mobility for the astronaut working in space.